Germany's foreign minister says the country has a terrorism problem, but it's not what you think. We'll look into it on this episode of The Hot Zone. This is The Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hey folks, well, the political establishment in Germany is struggling. And the country's leadership is under attack, seemingly from all sides. In fact, Germany's voters seem to be moving in two directions, to the left and to the right, leaving a big hole in the center and making it increasingly difficult for the current leader, Angela Merkel, to hold her coalition together. Now, one thing's for sure. Voters are unhappy with the way things are. The Green Party environmentalists are clashing with police and taking over coal mines in parts of that country. And at the same time, the nationalist or some would say anti-immigrant party is gaining traction in parliament. But this is very concerning for the current leadership, obviously, who blame their anti-immigrant rhetoric for the assassination of a prominent pro-migrant politician in recent days. The German foreign minister Heiko Maas is even calling for weekly protests against right-wing extremism, claiming in an op-ed on Sunday, on Saturday, I mean, uh, that... Germany has a terrorism problem, but he's not talking about the 16 people who have been killed in this decade in ISIS-inspired terror attacks across Germany. Nope. He's not referring to the several attacks by left-wing socialist groups. He's specifically targeting right-wing groups or individuals which have been responsible for exactly one death this century. Now, look, right-wing terror is a problem in Germany, and terror is terror, whether it comes from a lone wolf jihadi or some weenie wannabe Nazi. It's all bad. But in this case, as in most cases, politics intrudes on rationality and can blow things really out of proportion. Here's what I mean. Germany has seen a huge wave of migration since about 2015. And now the world's, it's now the world's second largest immigrant destination. Three guesses which country is the first largest. I won't give it away, but its initials are USA. Germany's now looking at about 15% of its total population is foreign-born. This has had a profound effect on the crime rates in that country, and so it should come as no surprise that it's affecting the politics as well. Last week, 11 men, most of them from Syria, went on trial in Germany over the gang rape of an 18-year-old woman last October. The defendants aged between 18 and 30, and they were charged with raping the young woman outside a nightclub in Freiburg. Only one of the suspects is an actual German citizen, however, with the rest being eight Syrians, two Algerians, and an Iraqi. So there's that. Now, when I was in Germany last year, I looked into these reports of a spike in sex crimes by migrants and interviewed one woman who's a member of a right-wing movement to try to draw attention to that problem. So across Europe, and especially here in Germany, uh, there's been a really staggering rise in sexual assaults, uh, sexual harassment, even even rapes, and uh, children as young as 10 years old. So Aline is starting a new movement, right? Right. Our, mu- our movement is called 120 decibel, and it stands for the noise that's made by a personal pocket alarm. The, the alarm that you have to carry if exactly. somebody is uh, attacking you exactly. or something. Exactly, and these pocket, al- pocket, alarms, al- pocket alarms are being sold more and more because people don't feel safe on the streets anymore, especially women. Mm-hmm. We don't like to go out on our own when it turns dark. Because have you have you felt this yourself? I have felt this myself. My friends have felt this myself. It is unfortunately a very common feeling. And we wanted to do something against it. We wanted to draw attention to our fear. Die Täter lauern überall. Wenn wir im Park joggen gehen, wenn wir abends von der Arbeit nach Hause kommen, wenn wir an der Bushaltestelle warten. Wir sind nicht sicher, weil ihr uns nicht schützt. Weil ihr euch weigert, unsere Grenzen zu sichern. So we've heard of that. We've had the Me Too movement in the United States that has tried to bring attention to this uh, problem of sexual harassment and that sort of thing. But this is even more important for you here because you, these people are coming into your country uh, uninvited and are bringing their sort of seventh century ways with them, right? Is that exactly? They're coming from patriarchal systems where a woman isn't worth a lot. So mm-hmm. they, when they see a woman without head, not wearing a headscarf or wearing shorter dresses, mm-hmm. then they see this as 
um, an invitation for them to be able to do whatever they want. So some people have said that you should perhaps cover your hair or not wear the long dresses. How do you feel about that? I feel that this is impossible for me because this is my home and here are our rules and it's our culture, our history, and whoever comes here has to integrate into our culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's unfortunate that here in, in Germany that you have to call it the 120 decibel movement and not the 357 caliber movement right. <laughs> our, <laughs> because you can't right. do anything to protect yourself. Exactly. Really, right? We have no um, possibility to protect ourselves. We, are, um, we need to be protected by the state. The state um, prohibits us from protecting ourselves, so we need the state to protect us by closing the borders and sending away those who haven't integrated and who are becoming criminals. Now, so a lot of people would say that that's a very racist thing to say. How do, how do you answer that, that uh, accusation? Well, it isn't racist because um, cultural differences are mm -hmm. no race in first place. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is about our fear and this is calling us racist is a way to shut us down mm -hmm. to sweep this topic under the carpet and to neglect all those people who have suffered from attacks and harassments and assaults that's right well thank you very much for talking with us you're very well I'm spoken glad. but the rise in sexual assaults isn't the only problem that they're seeing with mass migration i was personally offered drugs by a group of migrants while i was walking through a park in berlin this is Gerlitzer Park in West Berlin. These police we've been following around here for the last few minutes call it Worst Berlin because this is one of the worst areas of the whole city. They've been here doing stings uh, for drug dealers. We didn't make it 12 feet inside the gate of this park and we were offered drugs already uh, several times since we've been here. Check this out. I have one packet, big packet, 60 euros. Uh, 50 euros, 50, 50 euros. 50 euros? Yeah, it's 6 grams. For 6 grams? Yeah, yeah, big packet. Wow, that's too much. Yeah, it's Where are you from? Me? Yeah. I'm from Africa, Guinea. What, Guinea? You got cocaine? We talk about a bit, yeah, I have cocaine, good cocaine. Where does that come from? The cocaine? Yeah. Um, so these are some very frustrated cops because they're telling us that they come down here and they, they can arrest these guys every day. And the only thing they can do is give them a fine. And all that happens is since these guys don't have any money is the German state gives the drug dealer the money to pay his fine and then lets him out. And he comes right back here and does it again. They, the cops here are telling us that some of these guys have been arrested more than 50 times and they're still back out here dealing drugs. And 95% of the people that they arrest here are illegal immigrants. All right, now there are definitely some very bad elements of the far right in Germany, but as usual, the media is overstating its case when it comes to people who believe in conservative values, let's say. Heck, Angela Merkel's party is called the Conservative Party in Germany. If you were to take your average church-going homeschool family in the United States and drop them over in Germany, they'd be considered just to the right of Attila the Hun. And I'm not joking. Homeschooling in Germany has been illegal since 1919, and the government there has been known to forcibly remove children from their homes when their parents dare to try and school their own kids. So when you hear the far-right mantra from the media, they always have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. The skinhead white supremacists do exist in Germany, but don't let the media fool you into thinking that most of the people uh, to which that label is given actually fit the label. I met with a leader of the AFD, or Alternative for Germany Party, that's the right-wing party over there, to find out what they really stand for. We're here at the German Parliament building to meet with Georg Pazderski. He's the deputy party leader of Alternative for Germany, which is a conservative political party here in Germany that's been really gaining popularity lately. They've got 94 seats now in the parliament, and that's due mostly to their, their conservative values and their uh, opposition to the migration that's been happening, or illegal immigration, into Germany. We're going to go meet with him now. Um, last two and a half years... Um, we, we had more than two million migrants coming to Germany. Most of the migrants are young males. 
and they are coming to Germany from uh, relatively archaic countries, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which which um, have a, a totally different understanding uh, as far as the rights of women are concerned, the rights of people are concerned, and they're coming here to Germany, and uh, they found uh, a culture, a Western European, a Western culture, and they do not fit in. And this means that the the security of Germany is deteriorating. We say close the borders, find out who came to Germany, then those people out from Germany who do not belong to Germany or do not fit to Germany, and then punish those people who are doing crimes, send them out. And we have to turn around um, the policy of Miss Merkel, who is welcoming all people from all over the world, uh, which um, causes a lot of problems in Germany. Uh, our Second Amendment uh, embodies our right or enshrines our right to self-defense. Uh, what would you, what would your advice be to our people about protecting that right when you, uh, you know, don't have that that ability here? Yeah, if your government is not able to protect you. Yeah, and then you have to protect yourself. And I would say people do it. If you have the chance to do it, then do it. Because um, we have to protect our families. We have to protect our way of living. And this is my advice to American people. On the 19th of December, 2016, a Tunisian terrorist motivated by ISIS killed a truck driver, hijacked his truck, and drove that semi through a Christmas market that was right here on this spot next to the Kaiser Wilhelm Church in West Berlin. He killed 12 people and injured more than 50 in the worst terror attack since 1980 here in Germany. It's something that Germany's been really struggling with uh, as they've brought so many millions of refugees into their country. This Tunisian man posed as a minor and uh, came here seeking asylum, ostensibly, and then used that freedom that he had been given by the German people to kill the very people who offered him sanctuary. All right, so let's recap. Number one, there are problems in Germany relating to immigration. That's pretty clear to anybody who wants to look. Number two, those problems are leading to a schism in the politics of the country. Number three, said schisms are causing more problems. The politicians are trying to fix those problems by consolidating their control over the people. And number four, those suffering most from that consolidation of power are the everyday citizens of Germany. And there are lots of lessons in this for America. And that's why I'm talking about it today. Because we see so many of the same issues that are now starting to crop up on U.S. soil. And so I think it's important to see what's further down the road if we let it get away from we the people. All right. That's all I have for today, folks. I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great Friday and a great weekend. I'm traveling all next week, so I'll have some fun stuff from on the road in Washington, D.C. So stay tuned and have a great weekend. I'm Chuck Holton. This has been The Hot Zone. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.